Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about interfacing. We're going to be talking about what it is, different types, and then how to use it. You can see the examples of interfacing here. These are different types. And what it is, is a material that goes on the inside or between layers of fabric in order to provide body stability and stiffness to your fabric. I have two examples here. So this is just a polyester silky fabric. Now this one does not have any interfacing and you can see it's pretty flimsy. This one has interfacing on the wrong side. This is just a lightweight fusible interfacing, but you can see the difference. It definitely has a lot more body to it and it has, it's easier to create different shapes with it. So this would be ideal for waistbands, collars, cuffs, and it's commonly used in garment sewing, but you can use it in other projects as well. Now, if you use it correctly, it's going to be on the wrong side of the garment between layers, so you'll never see it and you'll never know what's being used, but it does provide a valuable asset to our projects. There are three different types of interfacing. We have woven, non-woven, and the knit interfacing. The first example I have here is the woven interfacing, and it's actually similar to fabric. You can actually look at it and see the threads going across and up and down, so it has a grain line. And like fabric, you need to follow the grain line direction. So when you're cutting out your pattern pieces, you cut them out just like you do on your fabric. So you can't put your pattern pieces either which way. Now, since it is like a fabric, you do need to pre-shrink it before you use it, so definitely check the directions when you purchase it so you know how to do that, and it does tend to fray. But the positive thing, and what a lot of people like using this for, is for garment sewing because it maintains the drape of the fabric you're working with. So if the draping of the fabric is very important to you, then this is a good interfacing to use. Also, it's very durable. Here's an example of non-woven interfacing, and this one is actually fairly common. What it is is fibers that are just bonded together in order to create this material. But if I was to bring in this example again of the woven, you can definitely see a difference. So this actually, you can see the threads, we have the grain line. This is just the fibers that are stuck together. There is no grain line to it. So this means you can cut out your pattern pieces any which way and it's not going to matter. Also, it's not going to unravel and you don't have to worry about pre-shrinking it. So it's very convenient to use, it's just not as durable as the woven interfacing. My last type is going to be knit interfacing and like the name implies, it's perfect for knit fabric because it has some stretch to it. So we like it, it has the flexibility. The only thing is it stretches this way, doesn't really stretch the other way. So you wanna be careful when you cut out your pattern pieces that it's going to be the same as your fabric so you can take advantage of that stretch. Interfacing comes in different weights, such as lightweight, midweight, and heavyweight. You can see a couple of examples here. I have lightweight, and this is actually a heavyweight. For this one, you can see that it is a lot thinner because we're only getting a little bit of support, while this one's a lot heavier, which would be ideal for maybe a cuff. Now you're choosing depending on either the weight of your fabric or on the project. So if I'm doing a sheer blouse and I just need a little bit of support, I'm gonna choose the interfacing that's either close to that or a little bit lighter. So a lightweight fabric, I'm gonna use lightweight interfacing. There are other cases where you're creating a project where you want something really stiff. If I'm making a hat, even if I'm using cotton, but I wanna make a really stiff brim, I can go with the heavyweight. Or another example we have here, this is craft interfacing. You can see this is really stiff and that's gonna give you a lot of stability. The most common colors that you're going to find interfacing is either gonna be white or a black slash gray. Now you may be able to find other colors through specialty shops or online, but if you go to your local fabric store, chances are these are the two colors you're going to find. Now you do need to be careful in the color interfacing you use. If I'm using a light color fabric, such as white or cream, you don't wanna then use a black interfacing because that's gonna show through and it's gonna look horrible and vice versa. If you're making something out of a chiffon, what you could do, instead of using a traditional interfacing, you can just do a couple layers of your chiffon and just layer it on top of each other to give it that stability. Or what I like to use is just a layer of organza, which is a little bit stiffer than the chiffon and it doesn't change the integrity of the chiffon. Just to show you the difference, this no interfacing this one has interfacing. So you can definitely see it's a lot less flimsy. 
Interfacing can be put in two ways. Either it's sew-in interfacing or it's fusible interfacing. And you can clearly see the difference as this has the little glue bubbles. So this is sewn in, like the name suggests. And then this is actually applied with your iron. You just ironed it on. And you may be thinking, well, this sounds a lot more convenient. Why don't I just do this one all the time? Not all fabrics can take ironing and high heat. So there will be some times where you do have to use the sew-in interfacing, such as if you're working with lace, metallic fabrics, velvet, you really want to use the sew-in interfacing as opposed to the fusible. So next we're going to be talking about how to attach the sew-in interfacing. Interfacing always gets applied to the wrong side of the fabric. So I'm going to flip this over so we're looking at the wrong side and then take my sew-in interfacing and it's going to be applied directly to that wrong side. And it needs to be the exact size. So whatever pattern I use to cut out my fabric, I'm going to use the same pattern for cutting out my interfacing as well. You're just going to lay it on top of each other and there's no right side or wrong side to the sewing interfacing. So it doesn't matter if I have this side showing or this side showing, it's the same thing. And then I'm going to pin around the perimeter of the whole piece because then we're going to do a basting stitch around the whole thing so then we can treat it as one fabric piece. So I'm just going to grab a couple of pins here and I like to place my pins the same as I do with sewing. So they're going perpendicular to the fabric. Now we're just going to be doing a basting stitch around the whole thing and you can either do the basting stitch at the seam allowance of your piece. So if my seam allowance is 5 eighths of an inch, I can do 5 eighths of an inch. Or you can make it a little bit less than that. So maybe instead of if I have a 5 eighths seam allowance, I do a half inch. That way I don't have to worry about my basting stitches showing after the whole thing is completed because they're going to be hidden within the seam allowance. So I'm going to go ahead, finish pinning this, and then we'll take it to the machine. The basting stitch is going to be the longest stitch on my machine. You don't have to worry about doing any back stitching. This is just a temporary stitch just to hold these pieces together because once we start sewing this piece to other pieces in our project, then it's going to be more permanently sewn in. So I'm just going to get a little bit closer, rotate this so then I can go ahead and finish doing the perimeter. And if your stitches aren't perfect, again, it's fine because we're just basically just sewing these two pieces together. When everything is sewn together, the sew-in interfacing is really only attached at where you do your stitches, so in the seam allowance. I can actually pull apart the interfacing and the fabric. It's not attached in the middle. So if you make a mistake, you can actually remove your stitches and then take the interfacing off and redo if you need to do it. You would use the same technique if you're also attaching organza as an interfacing to your chiffon. Next we're going to tackle fusible interfacing. So it's still going to be applied to the wrong side of my fabric, but you do need to be careful on which side you place your interfacing on because one side will have the glue bubbles and one side will be smooth. So the side with the glue bubbles goes to the wrong side. You don't want to flip that because you don't want to put your iron on it and then it's sticking to your other fabric or your iron or whatever. Now you'll notice that my interfacing is a little bit smaller than my actual fabric piece. For fusible interfacing, this is totally acceptable because we really don't need interfacing in our seam allowance. For sewing interfacing, we kind of have to because we need something to sew but that's not really the case with the fusible interfacing because we're fusing the whole thing to the fabric and that's what those little glue bubbles are. So you can make it slightly smaller. Now another important thing is to pre-treat your fabric before applying the fusible interfacing. This is always a good idea anyways in case there's going to be any shrinking, but sometimes the finishes on the fabric when it's brand new prevents the interfacing from fusing to it. So if you're having trouble, it could be because you didn't actually wash your fabric ahead of time or treat it correctly. So I have my iron heating up. It needs to be on a pretty hot setting. And then I'm going to take a press cloth, carefully place it over your thing because we don't want to shift anything. So you will need to be careful when you're just placing it on top of there. And then you're going to, I like to use a water bottle and just dampen the fabric. We don't want it to be soaking wet. You just want it to be damp because the dampness and then the steam created when we place iron, that's what's going to help fuse the interfacing into place. I'm going to carefully take my iron, set it down, 
and you want to leave it down for I would say about five six seconds and then when you need to move to the next section carefully lift it up and then set it down you don't just want to shift it across because that could cause wrinkles or shift something underneath so you do want to be careful now fusible interfacing tends to leave fabric a little bit stiffer than the sew-in interfacing so you do want to maybe experiment on little scraps to make sure it's going to have the stability that you want it to. Now because the whole thing is fused, once you have it fused to it, it makes it really difficult to take off. See, I can tell right here that I need to apply some more heat because this part didn't take. But then once it's sticking, you're not just going to be able to rip it off. So you do want to experiment a little bit if you haven't used it so you can make sure you're going to use it correctly and then you can go ahead and use it. New tutorials are released weekly so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 200 sewing video tutorials, including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at ProfessorPincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. Thanks for watching.